There we go. Uh, hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Let's Go Jojo. Yeah, you are listening. No, you are listening to Let's Go Jojo, the weekly Jojo's Bizarre Adventure podcast about weekly anime from Dynamite in the Brain and one half of the Secret Sailor of Madness. So come along and hang with the Let's Go gang. It's Dwayne. Hello. There's no Nile. Apparently, he's no. got builders either side of his flat, just constantly clanging pots and pans. And it's me, Brian. And on this episode, I want to see how much energy I've got after having the flu or something flu-like last week. But more importantly, we are covering the anime that aired two weeks. Oh boy, two weeks. It's October the 22nd to November the 5th, 2022, with the solitary two exceptions. That's not solitary. Uh, what is the, what is the version of solitary where there's two things? Um, I'm sure that the du- yeah. no, duality, that would be it. Because that would be yeah, uh, something be a else. Term for that. But um, yeah, so we're covering a fortnight's anime in how we would usually cover a week's anime. So yeah. Yes, and I watched a bunch of this while I had a fever. So who knows Perfect. what I remember? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Six, Episode Twenty. No, that's last week's. No, let me get copy. Uh, Twenty one. Yes, cop. Yeah, I was just I got the wrong things here in me, in front of me. It's in the other window. Is the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start again. And uh, not right from the start, though. No. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Snow Ocean, part six, episode 21, Awaken, uh, in which one of our heroines bites the dust, or appears to, as she mm. boils herself alive this week. Uh, but before we get to that, she's got to choose what she's going to do. Is FF going to fight Poochie, or is she going to fight the guy in the pointy hat whose name I've forgotten because I watched this so many weeks ago now. Oh, he's, is he Gucci or is that the guy who no, he's D and G bear trap? He's D and G Dolce and Gabbana. He's, he's Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's D and G. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, it's all coming back to me now. Yes. So she's got to pick which one of these she port she flinches. That gives uh, Pucci a chance to attack, um, and then. Tries to rip the disc out of FF so she'll stop being alive. Yeah, like FF like makes the very smart decision of, oh, you're only revealing yourself to me now, so because you really want this guy, so I'm gonna blow this motherfucker away. <laughs> but you know, he, he's interfering with her uh, stopping him living. Um, but I think she manages to kill him by pouring a bit of herself. Uh, yes, the, the liquid. That um, is themselves the uh, the plankton. She's plankton. She's yeah, a she, colony of plankton. She blows her own corpse. she she blows her own brains out and then hmm. escapes from the skull of the corpse she was currently animating into hmm. the mouth of D and G and then twists his own neck. Um, hmm. Pretty fucking fi- rad. Yeah. Yes, which finishes off his stand, and then she like the slime. Crawls away with the disc into the driver's compartment of the van they're in, or the ambulance. Yeah, she's in. trying to yeah. start the um, the ambulance to to get away. Um, obviously, we have a white snake punching through the front of the van <laughs> to stop her from getting away. Um, I I do like the the new way it's depicting her form. Um, where, where it's kind of like her uh, where she first appeared as protecting the farm equipment and stuff. Yes. Um, but with the the face of the, the corpse that she was been riding around in this whole time. I was like, it's a really, really nice combination of designs. Yeah, and she ends up like partially destroyed and then is being questioned by Poochie and then Poochie realizes, hang on a second, you're just delaying me and then we see her legs running away with the disc. With the disc like tucked into I mean like technically the the pocket, but more so like the, the, the cavity where the rest of her body should be, because it's her head and body dissolving. It's like, you think that's where I am? I'm f- I'm a colony of plankton, you idiot. My legs are running that way. <laughs> towards the um towards a hose in yes. the in the in the prison yard, yeah. Uh, but it turns out, oh no, she hasn't escaped into the water. She can't go and warn Jolene and tell her who is controlling White Snake, because he's has he switched discs or put another disc in her that her stand power is now heats up water. Yeah, he gave her the useless stand ability. He jammed another disc into her that is like you you turn water into boiling water is also your stand ability now. So when you turn on the tap, it's boiling hot water. It's yes. a hot tap now. 
So, um, and also that will kill any uh, microscopic yeah. stuff that lives in water. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and uh, yes. Yeah, so, Foo Fighters uh, appears to be dead. And then I hope they're not. But that seems like again, it's it, it's a very hard stand to kill. But like, how do you kill plankton? A bunch of different ways. Yes, this is definitely one of them. Yeah, uh, this is about halfway through the series, so it's a good chance that hmm. she is dead. I think um, it, it, it's possible. I, I hope not, and it's really sad. But then the second half of the episode distracts me with fucking weird JoJo physics, and I was just like, <laughs> okay, I don't have time yes. to be sad because weirdness is happening now. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Jolene and Alessui have a different problem in that the baby has hatched and they've well, got to the, chase the, after. The green guy who ate the baby obviously is dead because he's yes. stand user's dead. But the baby has hatched from the egg and it's getting away. It's slowly getting away. crawling away. We've got to get that baby because we can't let White Snake get that baby because he's got some, some sort of plans for it. Also, yeah, we had White Snake. Uh, Poochie was questioning. That's what he was. That's what she was delaying it with. Was him asking, "What's the baby like? <laughs> Can you explain yeah, he, the baby to wants, me?" Yeah, because he said, "I could just take your memory from your head, and like it would give me all the facts and information and your point of view and everything. But I want your opinion. Like, what's he like? What, what was your impression yes. of him?" And she's like, "I don't fucking know. Is this some fucking dumb green baby?" <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he's so flippant. It's great. It's it's yeah. really good. And his face of oh, please tell me the thing I'm very interested in. She's like I don't fucking care. You it's get the really feeling he he wants her to describe it as like a tiny Dio, uh, of which it and is basically not. like a tiny Dio slash Jesus slash God, whatever the fucking way he yeah. beers Dio. Yeah, for sure. Instead, it is very much a green baby, but a green baby who, as you get closer to it, you shrink. Yeah, so if you get if you close the distance between you and the baby by half, you reduce in size by half. So yes. now that you're a quarter of the distance, you'd if you tried to get closer, you'd reduce in size by half again. So you'd never reach this baby, and you'd keep getting infinitesimally small. Um, I did like the way your man worked out the math, and I was like, yeah, that's true. Actually, that would work like that. <laughs> and he's explaining this to Jolie, and it still doesn't work. And she tries to move the string towards him, but her string keeps getting smaller as it gets closer to the baby. It's like, damn, how do we get this baby? Uh, and also, the baby not only has this power, it also has a stand. Uh, and the stand seems more malicious than the baby does. I guess it's just defensive. I just I guess it just perceives them yeah. as a threat, and it's defending the baby. Mm -hmm. um, and so they go through a whole wide variety of scrapes and plans. So there's a bit where Jolene's falling towards the baby and she realizes oh she's gonna just gonna be constantly falling she's never gonna hit the ground yeah. um they uh until Alistair rescues them then there's some there's a lot of stuff involving this glass bottle and it has to be that you propel something towards it because they throw a rock so it's yeah, not like, like it's shrinking it things because it's because he, he he threw a pebble at it and when the baby threw the pebble back it was a giant boulder coming towards yes. them it it was maintaining its normal size when the baby touched it. It it negated its power. So if the baby wants to touch something, it won't shrink. So yes, you, you have to like get the yeah, baby. Yeah, because it's to... it's the stand who throws the stone, not the baby at them. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, my bad, my bad. Yeah, because uh, they're hanging onto some rocks after they think they've gone away, and it throws the baby. It throws the baby. No, it throws the stone upwards, and then it comes back down as a boulder on onto them. Um, it's really good use of physical space as well because this is like a small tract of dirt, dirt in between some like grass and reeds and stuff, and it's just like the same twenty foot or whatever of just uh, muck and earth and grass. But it becomes like a whole fucking like cavernous kind of thing the more they shrink, and is I just like it. And also they have to trap the baby stand. I love saying that um, inside a bottle at one point. <laughs> Yes, after that, because Adesuri gets his legs caught under the bottle and then they trap the stand mm. in it. And then the baby touches Jolene and everything's back to normal. At the normal size, the baby's, she's holding the baby. The baby seems to be, they seem, they're like, oh, the baby likes you. Uh, he actually just seems really fascinated in the star on her shoulder. Um, they got the same birthmark, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's like, yes, it's good that we got this baby and White Snake doesn't have the baby and maybe we can use its power against White Snake. But it's evil! I'm going to have to kill the baby! <laughs> is what he's thinking to himself, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's where it goes out. It's uh, NOC declaring that this baby is his enemy and one day he will have to kill it. Hmm. Uh, because he detects evil powers 
from its stand. Uh, also, of which... its stand power is weird and crazy, and it's just like you can only they've only managed to break it by interesting the baby, basically. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, there does not seem to really be any evidence that the baby is actually evil. I mean, so it we're... looks evil. It does. It's a little it... goblin baby, you know. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. look great. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's no baby Yoda. Um, that's mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but does the stand get the title card? Green, green, grass of home. Oh yeah, it's green, green, green. I think is what they just call it, or okay, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got like a four-eyed mask with turbines coming out the side of its head, and like a shock-headed Peter type haircut. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, it's also little because it's mainly interfering with you when you're little. Mm-hmm. Also, I guess it's like it's the it's the shape of a man, but it's the size of a baby. Yeah. Yes. Um, and they're always going on about oh, if we stop the stand, it stops the baby. Yeah. Uh, as if, as if they, they seem to be under the impression that the baby is somehow, con- or Alice is, because Alice, Alice is making a lot. He's of, assuming a lot, yeah. yeah. Yes, he's ma- he makes some good observations and then makes a whole load of assumptions. <laughs> he he has to do most of the out loud thinking because Jolene can barely talk because she's still filled. Both of them are still filled with holes, but yes. one of her eye- her eyeballs constantly melting this entire episode. It's just super gross. Yes, I don't know how they're getting better from that, given that their medic uh, boiled themselves to death. Um, yeah, she manages to stitch up some of the holes in her, but like she can stitch up the holes in her tongue a little, and then what, what are you going to do about that eyeball? It's like, well, basically nothing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, good episode though. It's uh, it's a game of two halves because it, it's uh, totally quite different between the two different oh, yeah, parts sure. of the story. Um. Because it's uh, it's the, the second half is like comically sinister. The uh, it's definitely like a a. Bizarre situation to find yourself in. Whereas in the first one, the the you know, the threat is obviously to the character who seemingly fucking dies, um, unfortunately. But there is a bunch of comedy moments in it where she's like distracting him, like I don't fucking know, it's just some fucking baby, and her legs are running away and that kind of shit. It is comedy moments among the the character threat, whereas this one has an existential threat of you can never catch this baby. Yes. <laughs> Very odd thing. Yeah. You want the baby, but you gotta let the baby come to you and not chase the baby. Mm-hmm. Then we've got uh, next up is Cyberpunk Edgerunners episode ten. My moon, my man. And we're talking about this the day they announced that there's going to be a Cyberpunk Edgerunners role playing game hmm. using uh, I mean, the like, Cyberpunk if... role playing game rules, which does seem like a weird bit of like eating eating its own tail, but I guess it will probably have yeah, better art. I mean, like we already have the rules set for this, right? <laughs> we're good. Yes. But, uh, particularly because, like, even in this like final episode, there's like locations where, I'm, like, I know exactly where that is in the video game. Hmm. Uh, like the bit where the spot where Kiwi gets ambushed, I was like, I know exactly where that is. There's a mission there where you buy a something off two homeless men, and then it leads you to something which has come off the moon. Um, hmm. Again, very... really, really interesting use of assets, and it even has the thing of David kind of. Um picturing himself in these places like he's doing his regular commute but yes. this time there's no masturbation corner there's no people masturbating on masturbation corner and um, there's no people in the city it's kind of like his impression of the city and i, I thought that was kind of really interesting like it's it's really given i mean like because it's working from the assets it's given the the city itself a, a sense of space and place as well yeah yeah it's um and it ends with the, the characters assaulting Arasaka Tower, which is the thing that happens at the end of the role play, the video game as well. Um, mm-hmm. And you're facing off exact, with exactly the same person you face off at the end of the video game too. They, they called in the last boss to be the last boss, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, they're going to attack Arasaka Tower, rescue Lucy, because David knows he's completely fucked. And that's all he can do with the remaining parts of his life before he goes cyber psycho. Uh, if if the new role playing game is going to have mechanics for like the super tragic ending, uh, like this is like okay, you have all these little spell slots uh, slash freaking um, potions or whatever, and when you jam in the last one, you're dead. You're going to die after that one. You're going to go crazy and you're going to die. Yeah, it's uh, like, yeah, it, it's mechanical uh, in that way. Yeah, it's um, it's 
and it, 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 the doom plays out over a fairly uh, pop, uh, upbeat pop song, which I think also works quite well. Uh, mm-hmm. As pretty much every single character you've met so far in the show uh, gets killed, bar two. Yeah, obviously one guy has to survive because he's in the video game. I think. Yeah, oh, well, three, the four, four survive. So you've got the uh, there's the two Arasaka spies. One that basically sacrifices the other to keep her career. Uh, Adam Smasher survives because, yes, you've got to face course, it in the yeah. video game. Um, the driver survives and Lucy survives. Everybody else you've met dies in various gruesome manners. Like, I thought for a second they were going to kill um, your one by... Um... It, 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 like in the way it's framed, it's like okay, we're not going to see her corpse, and then it has an, a gruesome picture of her corpse. In the <laughs> yes. after. I was like, cool. Now I feel sad again. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks, y'all. Yeah, yeah. The way Rebecca dies is both funny and then tragic because she's yeah, yelling. It, she's it, yelling it, it at Adam right Smasher. The character that it's funny, yeah. but it's tragic because we like her. She's fun. Yes. Yeah, she yells at Adam Smasher as he's about to attack. We're hey, we're having a moment here as she just he just squashes her into the ground. Yeah, yeah. By landing on her feet first, um, mm. which then gives you an idea of like, oh my goodness, that how much does that man weigh? Uh, mm. Particularly as we've been seeing David, as he, as they constantly point out through the episode, the only reason he's able to move is because he's got anti gravity uh, boosters in each of his shoulders. Like Adam is... Smasher keeps calling it um, anti grav training wheels. It's like, yes. no, I can hold up my own fucking weight, which is a ridiculous amount. Whereas you got need all this fucking accoutrement yeah. just to stay standing. Yeah, which is why he's able to stand on things like the Arasaka uh, shuttle without crushing it earlier in yeah, the episode. Yeah. Um, uh, I just like the um, what's the fixer's name again? Oh, Faraday. Faraday. Yeah, yeah. his Him arrogance was very satisfying. Yes. That was nice because he shows up and he's like, "Look, I brought you the guy." And it's like David shows up. And is like, "What's up, bitches? I'm here as well." And it's like, "Look, I even brought you David." Fucking, I done <laughs> yes. my part of the deal. They're like, "Hey, hey, fucking Adam Smasher, get him!" And he's like, "Who the fuck are you, <laughs> Faraday? I don't have. A, <laughs> yes. I, you're not my boss. You don't get to fucking order me around." Yeah, and Arasaka already already put the blame on Faraday as being. Yeah. It's like we should never have got involved with FX. So look how messy this mission has got um and, and i love the look of his like three eyeballs one eyeball on either side of his head but you get to see all of them pop out of his fucking head yes. that's great that was very satisfying fuck that guy <laughs> yeah because the way he dies is just like just gets bounced around by the rest of the fight happening around him um, yeah they weren't even trying to kill him he was just collateral damage in the fight basically yeah yeah uh but yeah it ends with uh they offered david uh, Adam Smasherlight offers David the chance to become a construct, which is one of the plot points of the uh, the video game. But he refuses, so he just gets his head blown off hmm. at the end. And then we see Lucy having a really great time on the moon. Goes on a little moon holiday. Wow. Yeah. You know what would make this nice? If David was still alive and yes. here, that would be nice. Yeah. And also, the moon holiday looks kind of shitty as well, based it, given how much it costs. It's a very costs. tourist trap from like the first episode of Futurama kind of yes, thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I really enjoyed the series. I think it does a very good. I, th- I was trying to think. It's. I think in terms of like capturing the look of a video game on screen, but without making it slavishly look like the video game, mm-hmm. which it does a superb job, and I think it made me enjoy the video game in retrospect a bit more than I did. Okay. Um, just because I was like taking like things like the the little sound effect whenever they do the uh, telephone calls. Mm. I was like, oh yeah, I love that sound effect in the game. But now I see it in like a different situation. I realize how much I love that sound effect in the game. When I was playing in the game, yeah, it was just yeah. part of the, the game process. It was like, okay, this is that's the cue to make me go to the next bit of the story because I'm getting a little bit more information. But now I'm hearing it in the context of this story that I have no input in. I was like, that's a really good sound effect. Um, it's an interesting one because, like I said, they're taking the assets, the, the visual assets and the audio assets from the, the game and even taking some of the mechanical ass- assets and ideas from the role-playing game, like yeah. the um, the me- medevac guys and that kind yes. of stuff. Um, and they have a lot to pull from, like even... Um, 
their their hacker kind of hack it into him again and going like hey i'll give you the map on the way out because i'm totally going to be die because guess what i got betrayed as well and just showing the route that they need to take and i was like i assume that's what the fucking map looks like in the game it's just yeah like you have all these stuff to work from so yeah they're, they're using it very well what materials are given to them yeah, I think the only thing that helps strong a bit is, as I've seen other people point out, is that the the visual representation of net running isn't very exciting, and it's not very exciting in the the video game either. It, yeah, it's... I guess they had a better idea for the visual of the um, the the sand of Easton, like that. Yes. Was the, the, the physical aspects of the 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 cybernetics is the thing they were really concerned with and less concerned with the the net running um visualization because yeah. the game wasn't about that either so yeah no i know it's quite right that it's not that much about it in the game because that was always the problem when you i was running the or playing the pen and paper rpg is mm-hmm. the fact that it used to be like you'd have a character who was a net runner as you've got here and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. as soon as you got to the part of the story which involved net running it was like all the other players had to sit by <laughs> While a, a player, one of the players got to play a solo game with the GM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a difficult one to to marry the two. Yeah, yeah. So now in the video game, it works more like spells essentially. So you just ha- you're on the fly hacking the environment and you're on the ground like hacking NPCs. The thing in front of you kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. Um, which I wonder whether that's how it works in the current Cyberpunk Red. Uh, I've not had a look at that rule set. Um, mm-hmm. And then at a certain point, you do they, you you do in one part of the story, you do the same thing they did when they shoved her in a bath full of ice in order to go deep into the Arasaka guy they cut, captured, Tanaka. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where the visuals look the same as that what sort of white on black, uh, ghostly world. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes a bit more sense looking like that in the game. It didn't really need to look like that, I don't think in this, but maybe they're just doing that for visual consistency. Um, yeah, could be. Because be. the idea in the game is you're you're delving into... You're not delving into somebody's head, you're delving into a bit of the internet that is like... Uh, oh, like the old... Uh, shouldn't be the... Yeah, it's like the, the old... Yeah, 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 it's like the, the leftover bit where there's rogue That's AI. That's probably it's why they wanted to make it look the same, because that was apparently what Lucy was also looking into. Yes, um, when she was yeah, time, when she yeah. was a kid, yeah. Um, so they wanted to keep that yeah, visual consistency is probably the reason for it. Yeah, yeah, but overall, good series. Um, and you liked it as well. You've not played the game, so I think it yep. works for everybody. It's a it's a fun trigger series. Um, yep. Well, fun. Uh, <laughs> fun yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's got a very depressing ending, but I I quite I kind of like how bleak it ends because um, it it does. The the pop music and the it's like uh, she's like oh no I was trying to save you David but I kind of knew that you were, that wasn't going to work and you were always going to end up doing this anyway so it's very clear from like the outset that this wasn't going to end with the super happy ending I mean it, the opening is him like running and his body falling apart in fire and uh, getting shot in the head that's the that's the opening fucking thing that they do of the yeah show. I I, and I guess um, the only guy who probably gets his happy ending. Is Adam Smasher, and he's a guy we only meet in the last episode because uh, he gets paid. <laughs> yep, he's just doing a job. Yeah, uh, though I guess yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I can't remember what the driver's name is. They do get to split the fee. He does mention that to Lucy that they, uh, that David told them to uh, split the fee uh, as they go away. So yeah, yeah, which is how which is how she could afford to go to the moon. Uh, but that's all the side punk we'll have this week uh, as we now go to Poo Poo Mold Car Driving School, episode 3 and 4. <laughs> 3, not so much side punk. Uh, this is the one where they're trying to feed them slop, but they want lettuce and they use a fair amount of footage from the first series. And I was like, okay, this this is maybe, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to rush back with another Poo Poo Mold Car series quite so I, I can see why, yeah, you can see where they're. <clears throat> cutting corners because uh, again it was like setting it at the driving school is like oh because they only have to build like the one set and then any extra stuff they're adding to that i i get the logic but this was like saving animation as well a bit yeah yes uh second one though was bug and rescue episode four where they're going to give them vr training so they've got vr booths to put car-sized guinea pigs in with car-sized mm. guinea pigs vr helmets uh 
but then one of the other mole cars chews through the wire. The because it looks orange like a carrot. Yes, the otaku character, the otaku driver is playing on his PSP, and he's playing the video game of the mole car magical girl. He drops it on the broken lead, and that causes the contents of his video game to end up inside the VR. And uh, it all becomes very chaotic. The are panicking because there's giant monsters in their VR driving simulator. Yeah. Uh, But then they turn into magical girls. And are they panicking because of the giant monster? Are they panicking because of the cat? (laughs) Uh, It's probably the cat, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. (laughs) Uh, And then they escape the monsters. And then they come out the booths and they're both wearing the magical girl costumes. <laughs> Somehow they've, that has escaped the game and they're now physically dressed as magical girls. And the magical girl video game character, idol, whatever, managed to get back into... I thought it looked like a Game Boy Advance. Managed to get back into his Game Boy Advance and it's like, everything's fine except these two now can transform as well. I guess that's in the canon. <laughs> okay, sure. Yes. Um... Yeah, so that was it. That one was a bit more like uh, what I was expecting from the Pooh Pooh Mulcat. Just absolute absurdity. Um, mm-hmm. And it got them to do a little something a little bit different, which I guess would probably also save a lot of uh, stop motion. Because you get to do the movements. fake CG uh, yeah. VR world. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, now going back and looking at this again. Did they rescue the cat? No, they run away from the cat. Yeah, they did get the gag. Oh no, they're running towards the cat. Are they tr- yeah, they ah, uh, they're rescuing the cat from the uh, from being stepped on by Godzilla. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Um, it's it's good. I, I can see where they're cost saving stuff, but it's still fun. It is still fun, but uh, I do it does feel a little bit like they rushed back because they wanted to make more money from selling uh, more yeah. poo poo more car merchandise. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we got Dragon Quest: The Adventure of Die One Hundred. Farewell, the beloved Earth, mm. um, in which two lads are still slapping each other in the sky. And this is the thing uh, I watched was... the longest ago, and I can't try to remember what it is that happened. Um, like Fern has been a real dick. Like he's got some really good maniacal, maniacal kind of fucking laughter. Um, there's a few sound effects I noticed that his big form was making i thought it was the the sound effects they use for lavos in um chrono trigger but I, it's definitely off some fucking square game designed by toriyama <laughs> characters that i've played i was like i know these sound effects that he's making it's driving me crazy yeah i wonder if they do have like access to like uh here's the square edix uh sound library. The sound library yeah for sure um but uh, the way the fight kind of goes is uh, he manages to stab Dai in the gut with his gigantic fingers, like they're kind of like pinched together. And he's like, "Oh, that's right, I I gotta rip him to shreds, like because miracles keep happening in this case." Oh like, yes, I remember how he kills the yeah, now. So it's... his dad's sword comes from comes from er- the earth into space to protect him, and his dad's spirit is like, "Yes, you must." The, the sun shining off the sword wakes him up and because it flashes into his eyes. It's like, yeah, it's like your mother's soul. You need to be the sun now. Take that my sword and fucking cut through his his emperor's eye or whatever it's called um a big glowing weak spot obviously uh yeah. and it's got a big lead up with the music and everything he's like and he's he's cutting through him and then the eye closes and then the sword breaks and him and his dad's ghost are like what the fuck <laughs> which is very funny like it's like oh i thought i thought that'd do it that time okay fair enough i guess that's not gonna do it but nah. burns like nah you I'm going to cheap you out. Uh, I'm going to squeeze you. And Dai needs to get his regular sword, which is right there, stabbed into Vern. Yes. Uh, is he going to pull it out? No, he's just going to drag it all the way through his Vern's body. Pretty fucking rad. Um, so yeah, he, he gets cut in twice. Cut in half twice, I guess, because his regular body and yeah. his gigantic body are now cut in half. And uh, he's going to die. I guess the... the, the, the poetic irony is he, what's left of him is going to fa- fall into the sun so there you go there's your yes. fucking sun <laughs> uh, and then die falls to earth uh, they capture him and then hello it's me Kilvern I've come to blow everybody up <laughs> if, if you want the if, if you want a version of the super happy ending what you do is you watch it up to the, the commercial break where Pop's like I'm going to refuse to let anyone but me catch him and they're all laugh and everything's happy and then you go, wow, that was a great show. And you turn it right the fuck off. 
Because after the break, Kilburn's like, I'm here to fuck everything up. Uh, but how his head was cut off. And it's like, yeah, you said nothing who'd, that can live without its head. Which you didn't say to me. You said to, ah, my puppet master. It was the little guy all the time. Can you believe it? Yeah, the little yes. guy was the real yes. Kilburn. Uh, and inside Kilburn's head is another, whatever they're called, black hole bombs or black whatever. Black core or something. That's it, black yeah. core. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. I'm going to set that to lost. explode, it'll set off that and it'll still destroy the surface world. Alright, peace out, I'm going. But he gets immediately shot with one of those feathers and Mam hits him with yes. the refractor fist. One of the few times the refractor fist has ever come in fucking useful. Pity you didn't kill him earlier, but alright, fair enough. Um, um, and so Dai is going to fly uh, Kilburn's body into the sun to protect the world. Yeah, him and Papa are going to get him up. And it's like, Papa's like, ah, if I got to go out, I'll go out with you, Dai. And Dai's like, no, kicks him off. Yeah. Very tragically, I'll take the hit. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. That Dai yeah. is totally exploded. Yeah, and they set up a memorial to him. And then they point out, look, the jewel. Yes, Lon Burrick shows back up and says, no, Dai's still alive. Look, the sword's jewel. Is still uh, bright. It hasn't faded. So somewhere out there, dies alive. They just hang it's either in heaven or hell. Um, yes. But as long as that Jewish jewel is shining, it's connected to his life force, so it means he's yeah. alive. And so, so this is just a signal for him to get back. So while in the meantime, when he gets back, we'll all fix up all our various different things that we're doing and continue with our lives, so he can come back yes. and everything's super happy. Which we don't see him come back, but presumably he he will eventually. Not in any kind of sequel. <laughs> yeah, and then we get a quick epilogue of what everyone else is doing. So mm. Yunkel and uh, the Dragon Knight fella are wandering around, uh, with being followed by the uh, priestess <laughs> who is in love with Yunkel. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Pop and his two girlfriends are wandering <laughs> around in a party. Um, hmm. Avon has grown a ridiculous moustache. He's grown no. Avon stash to match his Avon stash. And yes. I, I did like the Queen kind of saying prior to the commercial break, it's like, you hang on to die because heroes have a habit of disappearing right after they save the fucking world. And she was fucking right. She called yes. it. Yeah. And the expression on Avon's face is like, okay, I can never what am I leave doing here. here. I can never leave here again. I, I, I've been caught by my girlfriend. Um, Q, hmm. uh, they're making a new fort for the uh, Beast Commandos. Dedicated to the um, our, our little golden boy, um, which is nice. And I did like him and Crocodile. I guess they're just part of the army now. Yes. <laughs> sure, why not? And I guess if you're putting all these things with Gomichan's face on around, when the new Gomichan shows up, it might go, hmm, this is curious. I need to find out about why there's so many pictures of me around here already. Um, oh, uh, uh, freaking, what's a uh, pop's master called? Um, oh, he's yes, making he's... the fake heroes return all the jewels they were lost. Yes, <laughs> from bed as well, very lazily, but yeah. Uh, and Nova's become Lon Beric's apprentice. Um, and uh, Leona is Leona's still waiting yes. by the yes. memorial yes. slash indicator of where to come back for die, but it's just like, yeah, he'll be back one day, probably. Yes, and then we get a nice. I'm not the uh, Adventure of Die Dragon Quest Thin Card. I was like, excellent. That is how you want to end this 100 episodes of a really great show. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. Well done, Toei. Even though you're, this was, is a great show, and yet you think this is frequently being outshot on the animation level by One Piece episodes, <laughs> but it's still really good. Yeah, yeah, it's still good. I mean, like, the, the fight at the first half of this episode looks fucking excellent. It's just some... It is yeah. some crazy Dragon Ball shit in the good way. Yeah. Yeah, and that final blow to Vern when it happened, I was like, that's just crazy. I've never seen anybody do that. Of just, like, slicing the villain from uh, shoulder to groin. Um, Twice, technically. He cuts yeah. his regular groin and his giant groin. So, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very satisfying. It, it hits pretty it fucking hard, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then revealing that it was a bigger jerk than Vern all along. And it was the guy who has been a bigger jerk than Vern all along. Um, yeah, I like I like that ending of Kilvern coming back as well. Um, 
I, it's it's so close to being nearly a bad ending because it's like, oh, did you have to go with like this? Like, oh, and then the heroic sacrifices. Like, and, but everyone's just like, oh, it'll be fine. He'll be great. he'll be back. Like, and they have a clear indicator that he will. You know what I mean? Yes. It, yeah. It just manages to steer out of it a little, but um, I I think I saw some people having the same trouble because I, as far as I know, the the manga also ends very abruptly like that. It's like, oh, okay, that's it's just over now. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if uh. His Super Sentai ends similarly. Hmm. Um, I think he might come back, but I think it ends similarly with him being like blown out of a floating asteroid into space. Um, hmm. And then they're like, oh my goodness, he saved us all, but he sacrificed himself. But I think he might actually come back at the end, maybe because you're aiming at six-year-olds rather than ten-year-olds. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to make them all depressed and shit. Yes. You don't want to do a Transformers the movie kind of thing. Uh, no. Um, but like I, I do like that it was um, it, it manages to get the heroic sacrifice tragedy and also people like but but come out like steer out of that into hope. It does a it does a pretty good job of it. Yeah, yeah, um, very enjoyable. I shall probably mm. eventually read through the comic as it goes up on uh, the Shonen Jump site. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think right might. might have to go through all of Hunter Hunter first, uh, just so I can understand what's going on. See, Dad has shown up as well, Hunter. and that has distracted me a little. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm just about remembering all these people now. Uh, there's three different mafias. Um, there's the Phantom Troop, and there's uh, the Psychopathic Clown, and uh, they're all sort of angling towards each other. Mm. Uh, but yeah, on, on, on Dragon Quest, I, I do. Like I, it's not like I'm complaining a lot about the ending, but it's been like a magnificent 100 episodes, really fucking solid, um, very easily watchable through, um, very. Again, you've seen things take off this so many fucking times, but there's something different about watching it from the original uh story. Yeah, I wonder how many how many volumes did it go as a comic? Adventure of Die. Hmm. Uh, so I'm wondering, like, what's the, what's the speed of this thing? Um. Yeah, yeah, how quickly is it cutting through? Uh, it ran for 37 volumes. So let's whack okay, the old okay. calculator up. So 100 divided by 37. Uh, that should be the other way around, shouldn't it? Uh, 37 divided by 100. Uh, so yeah, why did I need to do that? It's very easy. So it's like point, yeah, of course it's point three seven. God, what brain? Get rid of it with it. Uh, a level in. That's not a bad old fucking go of it, is it? Yeah. No, that's not bad. That's like a third of a volume every episode. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Over a third of a volume every episode. So, I think that yeah, if you if you don't want if you don't want to watch a weekly show and jump of something that's currently still running. Um, this is probably a good thing to do. Uh, and watch. Well, that that it has a definitive end and has that solid fucking a hundred number, like yeah, um, yeah, totally worth doing. You don't need to watch the special. Um, you can skip that. Uh, then we got Detective Conan episode one thousand and sixty-one, Police Academy Arc, Wild Police Story Case, Morafushi Hiramitsu. But see, um, this is like I, I'm enjoying this, but where is the end? We don't know. We we'll, we don't know yet. <laughs> that's that's the difficulty with Detective Conan. Also having yeah. to skip to canon episodes. Yes. Yeah. Um. So this is the one where we're dealing with Morifushi, who's trying to find out uh, who killed his parents, and these possible suspects keep on showing up in the previous episodes. Hmm. Uh, and uh, the lads step in and help him out on the case. Because they're they're been because of all their solving crimes while still being on training for the job of policeman, the the their trainer guy has uh, basically went, all right, you guys got to clean the the showers and the toilets for for the week, and it better be sparkling. I better be able to eat off that fucking shower, uh, that kind of thing. And um, <clears throat> the lads are kind of like giving him shit. It's like, come on, tell us your secrets. Like I can't tell you my dark secret, um, but. They're like, yeah, we've all been investigating it anyway. We all fucking know. It's, you're looking for your parents' killer, and he's got a tattoo of, like, uh, it's a goblet, isn't it? I think it's a, gob- uh, it's a goblet. One remember. of the lads is like, what if it's, like, two of these faces of canon looking at each other? Because um, that would, it, 
interior that would form like a goblet because <laughs> i did think of that as like is this like two candlesticks type situation um yeah but um there's also a missing girl going around yes town, who who thing. looks who resembles uh a girl it... who used to live with him and his parents yes. back when he was a kid yeah uh and not, it, that's not related a, girl. yes yeah uh, not related but the she was related to the murderer. Yeah, yeah. Because that he thought that they'd kidnapped his daughter. Hmm. Um, it, it was it was one of those Detective Conan. What a tragic misunderstanding! If only you hadn't fucking done all those yes. crimes and killed all those people. Uh, anyway, yes, he kidnaps this seven-year-old girl, lays a load of bombs, but then the lads come in and sort him out. Because uh, they've learned how to defuse bombs at school as well. Also, he tries to kill himself, uh, and they refuse oh, to let him get away with. Set of bombs yeah. that he said, yeah, yeah, refuse to let him uh, get out of uh, justice by killing himself. And uh, uh, he gives him yeah. the quick signal of like, uh, like, uh, secure a top window, and That's because it, your yes. man's been wearing a, a class flag of secure blossoms that he made, that a cat had taken a shit and walked through the shit on it. Like, I don't know why that's plot important. <laughs> it's important that that flag smells of shit at all times. And um, they use that to catch him in like a fireman kind of, uh, uh, I forgot what the, those things the firemen hold out that you can jump into from like a second story window yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So this yeah. guy is the, this guy is the brother. He's the younger brother of the detective who everyone calls Kobe. Yes. The guy with the super deep voice, yeah, yeah. Yes, um, and he looks like uh, Kobe with the moustache. Um, yeah, and he just got the clue in the... Well, I say just got the clue, it's probably a year and a half ago he got the clue that he's connecting <laughs> things to yeah, zero. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how... this. So this guy is... This guy is the guy who zero thinks... Um, uh, Shuichi killed because he was the other un un right, every, okay. uh, it's like it, it, are all the black organization undercover agents from various uh, uh, organizations from around the world so yes he's the, he's the infiltrator for the public security bureau Shuichi's the infiltrator for the FBI um, hmm. uh, Hiromitsu was also infiltrating for the public security bureau yeah, I think that's the situation, and yeah, same organization, and uh, yeah, that's why there's the tension between Zero and Shuichi, because Zero thinks Shuichi as Bourbon killed him. Mm -hmm. So um, there you go. That's that. It's all part of this the the big overall story still, even like, though this, this is just a side like story the, of the like ultimate... here's some characters you've never really met because they've all been referred to as being dead. Uh, when yeah, this feels like the last oh, police you've got, one because they're all yeah, like lost sound on you, hours. Wayne. Oh, sorry. I've got no sound from you. No sound. Uh, that might Work. be me though. Let me just check on my levels. Say something again. Something again. Am I still here? Oh no. Oh, I got. It's me not hearing you. I think. Oh. Which is quite donkey. odd. <laughs> Hang on a second. Oh, what a nightmare. Oh. How strange. I mean, I'm still coming through, aren't I? So that's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. A bit of live technological changes as I switch to... Oh, that's no good. I can't see the audio devices here that I need to see. Oh. Yeah, I've just checked on the the what? YouTube and I'm not coming through. I think. Oh, don't worry, but don't worry, Dwayne. Don't worry, audience. I've got to edit all this out on the actual podcast. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know why, but it had suddenly decided to change my hardware out to some hardware that I don't even have. Um, how I bizarre! Oh no, 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 it was no problem your end. I just for some reason it. Switch to uh, it went from my sound blaster output hmm. to uh, X split stream audio renderer output, uh, okay. which I don't even know what that is. 
<laughs> but uh, whatever it is, it shouldn't be doing anything with the podcast. Uh, you were still recording, so you're still in the recording I've got, anything you were saying. I just couldn't hear okay. you. Uh, well, sorry anyway. for talking over you a bit, because I thought, uh, yeah, I thought there was cross wires gone. Hmm. Yeah, so did I. Uh, never had that happen before. Of, of all the strange, bizarre technical problems, that's a new one to me. Uh, so because we've had all the characters' episodes, and we've finally resolved the who killed that guy's parents, and they all fell asleep happily at the end. I assume the next Police Academy one is them all getting fucking horribly killed, right? I think this is it. I think this is the last story. Oh, no, oh we're one... actually not going to see how they all horribly died, no? Yeah, oh, there's, so there's one part left. Which I don't yeah. know whether we'll get it, which is just them. Uh, it's only one chapter, and it's them going to their graduation ceremony. What, that yeah, that's really fucking like <laughs> pulling on the heartstrings. All right, good job. Okay. Um, yeah, of them meeting some of the other characters and then uh, going to the graduation ceremony. So maybe that just be a flashback, or maybe they've already had that flashback. Uh, and this is the rest. Of it. So I think this is it. Uh, okay. Is there anything announced that's canon coming up? Let's have a quick butchers. Uh, no, the next episode is The Spiral of Rain and Malice, a TV original. And then The Targeted Chicken Sexer, which is also a TV original. <laughs> okay. I assume someone's trying to murder a chicken sexer. Hmm. Why? I don't know. Uh, not going to find out either. They're just too damn good at the job, I guess. Then we've got, now we're doubling up. Right, here we go. Welcome to Demon School, Arubicon, Season 3, Episode 3, Aruba's True Feelings. And welcome to Demon School, Arubicon, Season 3, Episode 4, The Signal That the Harvest Festival Has Begun. First half, Aruba, we're going to make you, well, first of all, we're going to go into the battler. He has, admits that he's part of the battler. They go inside, he realises, oh, I've not been in here for a long time. It's changed a lot. And uh, is he Ellie Goth? Ellie Goff is the creep who's hung yeah. around. Uh, he's busily, he's been filling up the uh, the battler with all sorts of magical items and devices and ingredients. So actually, he's a weird creepo, but he is good at making shit. Yes, uh, actually, they can. She can uh, teach Aruba how to make a uh, bow. You've got to um, grab a core because she can do it on her own because that's her blood power. But other mm -hmm. people need to use a core to create the bow. And what's the magic words he use? Quartz, quartz, is that it? Or yeah, something? I think it's quartz, quartz. And I'm not sure if there's anything else added to that. But like, you, you take an object, um, and it, depending on the object that you take, it'll it'll take on a different form. But it's also what the purpose you make the bow for um, imbues it with um, its, its, its shape. form. So, so your yeah. man obviously tries it on one of his anime figurines, and um, it turns into like a gigantic bull version of um, the head of the student council, yeah. like a life-size version yes. of her, but as a bull. Yes. Um, it's really fucking weird. And as we see in the end bit, she confiscates it because that's only been used for fucking crime. You know but that. She was happy. She was going to leave it there if a rumor had made it though. Yeah, that 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 would have been fine. That, that's a compliment. Uh, she fancies a rumor. A rumor is her boyfriend. Yes. So that's and also, okay. that guy's we, a creeper. So no, he's not allowed is, to have that. There is a line in that bit which also gives like, what on earth is that comic about? Because they're talking about like how one of the characters got trapped in a time prison. <laughs> yeah, like he goes to space as well. That comic sounds fucking class, and I love the fact yeah. that it's this weird long running manga that just went everywhere and did everything yes. as a as a romance manga. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good gag that there's this comic you're never going to see every chapter of, and then it can be referred. To, it, she can compare it to any situation she runs into, which then makes the comic <laughs> seem weirder and weirder. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so she's got it. He, the rumor's got to make. She's they've. He's collected some of the feathers of that guardian from season one that he befriended as like the first sign of like, hang on, something's up with this kid. Uh, and yeah, she he, the first bow he makes is just an imitation of hers and it falls apart. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's basically gives, gives him a few lashes of it and she's like, all right, we, uh, you get one more shot. And he's like, what are you talking about? We've got a box full of those feathers left. He's like, you get one more fucking shot. If you don't get this right, really fucking think. What do you what do you want to do with this bowl? Really fucking think about it. And if you haven't figured it out by the time I get back from shopping, then you're fucking done. 
Yeah. Um, uh, and so she, she goes off shopping with the guy who mostly picks up junk. When she's kind of thinking, it's like, fucking demons, man. They, they can't fucking concentrate on things. They can't focus because she's tried multiple times to take on an apprentice and they all lose interest. None of them have the kind of focus to be a proper archer like her because they're demons. It's it's in their demonic nature. I mean, like if they were something different than a demon, like, I don't know, a fucking human, that's a theoretical animal, though, that could focus on it. Maybe they could. But um, that's that's clearly not the case. This is going to be another failure. Yes, uh, and you, the backstory is like, yeah, okay, yeah, she's she's frustrated that, yeah, society does not live up to her expectations, essentially, mm. which is, does Demon seem to be. Human nature is not yeah. inclined for her. She's excited to teach her her bloodline ability, but no one's willing to fucking learn it because of how demons are so fickle and selfish and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we check in with the other. It's more. It always seems like checking in on the other tutors than the other pupils. As we get yeah, the, yeah. the siren is like she's not confident in her abilities to teach because she's just constantly drowning these two poor boys. Uh, but then they use that. They manage to use their bloodline abilities uh, to repel the water, essentially. Yes, yeah. or realize that water is ground, and therefore I could use my. Uh, I, my... Yeah, he has to see what it whatever he wants to manipulate as his bed and then he can manipulate yes. it. I didn't understand that's how his ability worked, but that is kind of hilarious. And the other guy just makes like a wall of swords of of wind around him so he can breathe, because yes. yeah, underwater you can't breathe. Uh, Mr. Hat is sort of explaining how things should work and then actually has worked completely different. Uh, you should respect these animals and be and don't consider them filthy, consider them your yeah, equals. Yeah, you see them, you're on the same level as them. And your man's like, yeah, these lady animals are still ladies. I get it, I get it. And the other one's just like, no, everyone, all of you motherfuckers yes. are beneath me. Yes. <laughs> he's become not, king of the prison, basically. You're not cross that, like, yes, but he's, she's still in the cage, whereas the owl boy hmm. has been let out of the cages and having tea with loads of tiny little animals. <laughs> It is very funny. You would think it'd be the other way around, but yeah, no, he, he's learned to respect them as equals because they're all so beautiful ladies, and she thinks they're beneath her because she's a fucking idol, and she'll be the, the queen of the animals, yeah. Uh, Lead is learning concentration by playing video games, but he tricks Robin by throwing the first few games, just as Robin thinks that he's going to have to throw some games. Uh, mm. He's like, oh my goodness, he got me. And then uh, the two lads manage to hit Balam. But well, they decide, wait a minute, what if we both try to hit him together at like at like yes. as a team? He's like, you can't block both of us, right? And it's like, yeah. It's like, no shit. And he's like, oh yeah, you did manage to hit me. Well done, lads. You passed. Uh, in the succubus lessons, Clara is passing because she has a secret technique where she hides and surprises you and then glomps you. And oh dear, that is a little bit sexy. Uh and then it's a See, little it, worrying how the succubus teacher then licks her lips looking at Clara. It's like, I down, mean, lady. she's a succubus. She can't really help. It. Yes. Um, it, it, she's, she's got the kind of attractiveness where she's not sexually attractive. She's very, very cute. Yes. That, that's the way she leads. Yeah. Uh, but there is the mystery of the next episode why she's come dressed in a sort of a teddy bear outfit. <laughs> I, I would say she's more dressed like a dinosaur or something. It's, Some sort. It, she it's looks a mascot like she's outfit, dressed like a so. bad costume of her familiar, is what yes. she looks like. Yeah. And is also not talking to people. Uh, See, I, I think don't... it's like, I, I'm going to guess uh, that it's, you need a sexy costume to enhance your sexiness, whereas your one's wearing like a skin tight um, leather fucking zip up the front kind of thing, which I assume the lower she puts the zip, the sexier she becomes or something. Clara's like, well, I can't do that, so I could dress as a as a baby dinosaur. Would that be cute? Would that enhance my cuteness factor? I don't know. It's weird. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, we didn't check in with everybody. That's where we stopped. The other guys don't get checked. Allison is like, come on, Iruma. You've got to do this based on desires. So it's got to be something you have to keep secret from everybody else that you don't want to... Uh, filthy, also, it doesn't have to be a bit selfish. That, yes. That's important as well, as, as and, part of demonic stuff. Yeah, an embarrassing desire that you wouldn't want anyone to know, rather than all this uh, noble stuff you keep on coming out. And even his embarrassing desire is noble. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's it's embarrassing. It's uh, it's selfish. It is a desire, yes. but it is still noble because it's it's a thing he wants to share with other people. Yeah. Yes, he wants everybody to remain together. Uh, and that allows him to create this fuck-off-sized bow and arrow, which also seems to give him wings. Um, hmm. 
And uh, yeah, that's him sorted. They're ready to go. They're asking Kalego, how's the Misfit class going? And he's not answering. But then the other teacher's like, I can see on his face, he's very pleased and uh, he's very happy with the way things are going. Because their half thing is like, did you set them up to fail by giving them incredibly harsh teachers? And he's like, I give them the appropriate teachers to get them fucking over their hump, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it also feels like he was doing it for the benefit of some of those teachers as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, some of them do have a lot of uh, issues to work through. Mm. Uh, yeah, I like the bit of the fourth episode where uh, 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 as does something good, and then Balor's like, "That's my, uh, I taught him. <laughs> he's one of my pupils." <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeah, he's delighted to see how well his students are doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but still nervous and quiet because if you get, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's where his features. He's he's around the other adults. He's quiet and shy. Uh, it's only when with he's with the students, the, the misfits class, that he actually comes alive." Uh, episode four is basically where we get introduced to a load of rivals for this arc because they've got to go into the to this weird forest through four different gates to complete various tasks. And... Yeah, so you have to capture things to make a hot pot. Um, yes. Which I was just like, is that just going to be like ingredients gathering? It's like no. Then you see like the the candy whiskered tiger, and it has like you know rock candy for whiskers. And I was like, okay, so it's like weird animals and creatures you can fight. Yeah. For points. A bit like that yeah. Clara arc from the previous series. Mm. Um, it is, it's a point-based thing. Like, a lot of the small little living mushrooms aren't worth much, but there's boss animals that are worth a lot, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're introduced to, like, this little guy who really stinks. Mm. Uh, there's these three guys who are pretty good. There's this guy who is basically, what if you draw a horse as a man uh, who <laughs> always comes second? Um he very specifically comes second, which makes people think he, he can come first. Because who won this last year was our um, was our student council president. Amory, yes. And he, came, and he came very close second in that as well. It's just like, could he come first if he felt like it? Or is he purposely throwing it to come second each time in everything? Yeah. And then there's these two brothers who should be second years, but they flunked the they first year. Back. Yeah, and they're having to do, <laughs> redo it. Because they keep on wandering off the battlegrounds to hang out there rather than going to their classes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's established like oh yeah they're good in the wilderness not necessarily good in the class um, everybody's the, arguing the class coming back together yeah, yeah. Every, when they come back together everyone's arguing about who had the worst time of it um, mm. I did like the lads kind of saying it's like hey how come you didn't respond to our text it's like we didn't fucking get your text what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> um, just kind of annoyed about the whole situation uh Asmodeus is, I forgot, because it's been like four episodes, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot how completely smitten he is with Aruma. Um, Aruma's like, let's do our best, because they basically decided, alright, to decide who had the toughest training, will, among us, obviously we're going to gather points as a class, but which of us gets the most points here is going to prove which of us trained the hardest, because now we're much stronger. And Aruma's kind of like, yeah, come on, Asmodeus, we'll, do, we'll both do our best. And he's like, wait a minute, that means we're going to be doing it separately. Ah, oh, shit, I didn't want that to happen. I wanted to be hanging out with, with a rumor again. And also, it's pointed out, he doesn't need to raise his rank. He's already past the yes. level. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. He but yes, but he eventually realizes, well, I can, I can raise everybody up to my level, but I'll get enough mm. points so we can split it all between us and mm. uh, we'll all pass. Uh, uh, and they runs into uh, you're the big shouty lad, and uh, they team up. But then they're gonna they're gonna look for boss monsters while also searching for the legendary leaf. And then they're snuck up by those two brothers out of hmm. nowhere. Like, What's your? Deal? We also get the rules of the thing done in the style of like a. Um, I think it's like what you'd get at the start if you went to a film of like warning you not to pirate things and whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can't. Uh, it's basically you can't, you can't attack each other, but you can yeah. rob shit off other people. Yeah, which yeah. obviously one of our misfit class is very good at that. That's his bloodline ability, much to his mm. uh, annoyance. Um, born to be a thief. Um, what are you going to do with that? Well, it will probably come in useful here. And then there's the mystery of why is Clara dressed like that. Hmm. Because every, a few people, a few people have noticed, like, what's up with Clara? She's hanging back there, and not doing anything. But a, a bunch of people, including a rumor, is like, "Where's Clara? What the fuck?" 
I think my favourite visual gag in four is when Robin, the teacher, is explaining all the wonderful things you can find in this forest and they slide behind him and then the third thing is Kaleko who then grabs him by the head and hurls him into the sky. That's pretty good. I, I liked um, Robin and the... Uh, God's sakes, I've lost your voice teacher. again. Uh, oh my God. The hell? It hasn't it's changed here. That. There we go. Say something again, Dwayne. Something again? Am I? Yeah, here? there we go. It's fine. Weird. I don't no idea what is doing that. It's uh, my Yeah, end, I did not, like not, Robin not and the also. other teacher doing the whole um the int- introduction as to the rules of it. Very much so. I am acting in front of a camera. Unusual. Um it, it was good stiff stuff, you know. Yeah. Um I think it's always a pleasant surprise. I think I forget because I watch the other stuff first and this is quite often the last thing I watch. And I was like, oh, yeah, I really do love this show uh, and these characters. You'd never think of it as one of your top shows, but it's consistently fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Spy Family, episode 16 and 17, of which this returns to... Honestly, it, this seems even more like the format it should be than it was. I think it's done this yeah. occasionally before, but it feels like even better this time around. Yeah, they've, uh, they've gotten. They've really had the pacing down of the um the the shorter episodes or uh the the point one um episodes of the comic that kind of thing. Yeah, it feels like it feels even though it's twice as long. It feels more like Astro Fighter Sunred's timing in that it feels like it's just now giving enough time to whatever story. It doesn't feel like it has to divide yeah. it between the episode equally. Uh, so the first part of sixteen is Yours Kitchen where. Yor is coming back home late at night, covered in cuts, and uh, Lloyd is worried uh, what's going on here. And then I think I think it was the point at which you she had the brown paper bag with the blood coming out of it. I was like, <laughs> that was that was the point where I was like, oh, you know, she's going for cooking lessons. Um, yeah, yeah, but it, it's well set up, and you know how fucking dangerous she is. Uh, that it's just like, oh my god, her fucking job's getting really. It's like, no, 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 she's she's no. trying to learn how to cook because. She's good at killing, and that unfortunately bleeds into her um, her cooking ability, yes. <laughs> which will put you right the fuck down. Yes, that's where, well, she, she's chopping something, and then she's cut through the uh, the chopping board as well, just in one <laughs> blow. It, it it also constantly drives home how incredibly confident and perfectly okay she is with killing people. <laughs> that's yeah, that is not an Zero issue to her. No, everything else in her life uh, is the problem. It's it's a really good development of um <clears throat> I've forgotten the character's name her friend who worked in it yes. in the same office um but because she seemed kind of like shitty and bitchy before but the her boyfriend is like no she's really nice she's like well, she she appears really like you know standoffish yeah. but she's actually very generous with her time and everything I also yeah. like that he's not her boyfriend yet it's clearly he, he, he's he, that's the way he, yes. she wants it to go very much so yeah yes yeah. and he does as well but it's like he's deliberately invited himself around to these <laughs> these uh cooking so lessons. he can hang out with his would be yes. girlfriend yes yeah yeah, and then th- that particular night, uh, she- he's invited uh, your brother to be the one to eat her cooking because it's so terrible. Uh, but of course, he, uh, he he's got pretends to like it. To it yeah. yeah. Uh, or does yeah? But then they. Um, I I will say like if if he's going to eat her cooking at any stage, the joke is going to be he's going to vomit constantly while yes. enjoying her food thoroughly. Is, yes. It's done funnily, but if you do have like a. a, a phobia of that it's just like mm, the noises might throw you a little <laughs> yeah um uh, it's also seeing him in a situation where lloyd's not there he's a little less uh insane um, you can see why he's friends with this guy like yes they're actually on friendly terms it's just that he really fucking hates lloydy <laughs> yes but calls him lloydy so is it really that much hate um and then they cut it on oh we'll we'll get her to make something their mother made and, because um, she loved it, she she was there when her man was making it, and she has a distinct memory of it. So it's like, what did that feel like? And it's just like, okay, the missing thing is paprika and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they like, your, oh, your family was from the south, and they yeah. tend to use paprika in their cooking a lot. Yeah, it was. They make this. It's a stew with an egg on it. They make the stew. It tastes good, but it's not quite right. And then she's like, oh yeah, you're from this part of the country, so you, you'd probably put uh, sour cream in the stew. That was it. Yeah, 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 sour cream. Um, um, 
yeah, but Frigga yeah, no, is one of the ingredients, but yeah, it does it does feel like a recipe that you they could probably reproduce and probably have reproduced, and you can now buy the Spy Family cooking book. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then she goes home and makes it. She still screws up frying the egg, uh, as, which is a fairly good gag. But yes, the family enjoy it. Hooray! And the vision that. Uh, Bond had of your crying was actually tears of joy that the family in but then she's like, Well, if you enjoyed that, you'll love this thing I invented. It's <laughs> this weird looking dessert. And then cut to them doubled over with purple faces dying. Mm-hmm. And then the second half is the informant's great romance plan. Um Freddie wants what Lloyd's got. He wants a uh, <laughs> he wants a good woman, so he's got on a date, and he wants uh, Lloyd to give him some help, and so Lloyd has drawn out this insane flowchart <laughs> to guide your conversation. It, it's it's funny, like it's the thing of uh, it, one of the best things about the show. Everyone's a fucking moron. It's very funny, so they're all like stupid in their own way. Because Frankie's just like he doesn't realize he's actually pretty nice. Like just be yourself, and you'll probably be grand. But he's like, how do you do it, Lloyd? It was like, oh, well, I have a, I research all of their past. And Frankie's like, yeah, I've done that to a creepy degree because I'm an informant. It's like, mm, all right. Uh, and I have this flowchart worked out. It's like, if she says this, then you say that. But if she says this, it goes down this whole other, and it's like sheets and sheets of this. And Frankie's like, I'm not going to remember all that. And Lloyd's like, why wouldn't you? That's, that's how I do it. <laughs> um, so they're both morons. At one stage, he has Lloyd has to dress up as the woman like he makes a cast of her face or do, does his makeup to look like her so they can go on a pretend date and they can get a feel for because he hasn't even this is like a cigar shop he keeps going to he doesn't even fucking smoke um and it's just like just so you can get to ask her out so you, you get comfortable with talking to me dressed as her that kind of way it, yeah it goes pretty well up to the point where she's like yeah i'm not really i don't really like you that way sorry um and then they go get drunk. Yeah, Lloyd does like show up to to drink with him after. It's just like, well, like I kind of set you up to fail there, even though I was like, we did everything we could have. So it's like they're still friends, even though neither of them would admit it. So it's nice. And then the next one is carry out the Griffin plan, Full Metal Lady, and Omelette Rice Love. Um, so the Griffin plan is. The kids have got to work in groups and make cardboard 3D animals. Hmm. Uh, uh, but before we get to our, this our bit... Our regular school teacher is, um, yes. is doing the art class because Mr. Rodan is out fucking today. Um, but po- importantly, so, before we get to this, is yeah. Anya has shown Becky the photo of Bob that she made Lloyd take. She wanted a new family yeah, photo yeah, with Bob. I gotta show this to the Scion boy, so he'll be like, oh, what a fucking cool dog. You gotta come over w- w- to my house with your family. Yes, this plan Be- is gonna go perfect. Becky steals the photo because uh, she has fallen in love with Lloyd. Um, I'd forgotten she hadn't up to this point, because obviously, yeah, ahead in the comic. She's like, dude, your dad is hot. What the fuck? I'm keeping this. <laughs> Um, very um, funny. Is he seeing anybody? Yes, my bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so Anya ends up on the table with Damien, and uh, Damien wants to build a model of his family crest, the Griffin, to impress his father. And this was the episode where I was like, is his father actually mean to him, or is this in his head that he's meaner than he actually is? I think he's probably just cold, you know, that kind of... Yes, like or he, busy uh, all the time. Yeah, he's, he's apparently, like, he's so busy, like, the only way they can fucking get his attention in this entire spy plot is to, like, win enough uh, academic stars to meet him at a fucking end-of-year uh, academic roundup. And I'm just like, yeah, he must be very fucking busy, basically. Yeah, because I mean, you realise on this episode, it's like, oh yeah, why should we trust Damien's views of things any more than we trust Anya's views of... <laughs> What she when she goes off? Damien's on her a fairly smart kid, but he overhears uh, like one of the other kids saying, "It's like I heard they're gonna have someone come in and like judge our works for like a, like decent works of art." And he's like, "So this could?" And he's like, "Fuck, I could win like some um the stars for this and get on." And it's like it's a kid's art project. You're just doing it like for the yeah. for the thing. It's not a prize at the end of it. It's 
but yeah, he even gets in his head is if I make this Griffin so good, my father will finally be proud of me. And him hearing his own father's voice is one thing, but Anya's overhearing this and is like, oh, I'll fucking play that back in my head. And she does obviously Damien's and the father's voice. Um, it was like, good job, Anya, says Damien's father in her head. <laughs> um, just very funny shit. Uh, yeah, so. She helps make the models and improves it by giving jet engines to it. <laughs> she initially makes a bond it out of scrunched up bits of paper, I think yes. is the best way to describe it, and sellotape. Um, but she's like, I'm already done. I'll help you with your project. And obviously she's appearing like a beacon of hope to Damien, who can't possibly get this very detailed planned griffin done uh, in time. But she keeps adding things to it or doing it kind of half-assedly. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, upsets her, makes her cry. Henry tells Damien off. Uh, she make, turns Bond into a small female griffin to be the mate because of uh, Becky saying something about love. Uh, with with love, you can fly or something. That's like it, that. yes. Yeah. Um, I, I did like her a... thing as well. She initially makes um, Anya's dad as a, as a model. Yes. Because <laughs> he's so hot. And he's like, uh, I said make an animal, not a not a man. And he's like, Lloyd Borger's a weird fucking thing. And it's like, would you not say, sir, that man is also an animal? And he's like, oh, you got me. You fucking and him muttering to his bread is like cheeky fucking kid. Kind of thing. Yes. And then she's <laughs> like, stuff. no, Lloyd is more evolved than a simple animal and smashes the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's great in this episode. Very it is. childish, selfish stuff. Very I, think that's the, I think that's the other reason why I was like questioning Damien's visions of things is because you've now got Becky into delusional mode as well as Anya. Hmm. She hasn't been until this point. Becky has not been as delusional. And now she's full on delusional. Yeah. yeah. She's like never a, met like this man. Kid would be. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then the judge comes, uh, one of the local politicians comes, has a look. Uh, oh, it's from the Board of Trustees, isn't it? Sees yeah, the yeah. Griffin. It, it's something higher up, but this, this isn't going to get them any stellar stars. Yes. Uh, sees the Griffin and uh, the crumpled it up. Moves him to tears. Yes, it moves him to tears because he sees it as a vision of the nation's rebound from war. Um, and he thinks the uh, the female griffin is the dead baby griffin that the larger griffin is upset about. Um, <laughs> and that wins first prize. And I, <laughs> uh, then we get a little bit with Damien and talking to his butler, Jeeves. Uh, that was the return. bit that was genuinely sad, because a lot of yes. it you think is in Damien's head up to that point, but he's ringing home and he rings the butler and it's like, oh, did dad mention anything about my, my orientation day? And he's picturing getting punched by Anya in the face. And he's like, oh, yes, he hopes you're in good health. And he's like, yeah, sure he fucking does. All right, thanks, thanks, Jeeves. I was going to tell you about my day, but like, I really can't. I'm going to keep studying with my friends. Oh. Uh the really kind of sad like a kid just starved of affection whether it's there or not he doesn't feel it's there certainly and then there's a punchline though of henry just staring at the art project wondering how on earth this would not <laughs> first place <laughs> it's not elegant at all what the fuck yeah yeah uh then full metal lady is like uh this is the sort of the day-to-day -day life of uh the handler we get her name sylvia sherwood Get the, uh, th this is genuinely good because it's halfway between spy stuff where it's like I have such a regular uh, uh, day to day that I can throw them off like I go to the pool at, at this exact pool at this exact time on this day every fucking day so they're just like alright so then they get lazy and it's like and I just disguise myself and leave the pool so I can meet up with um, uh, Twilight and fucking go over the missions and that kind of stuff and she's very satisfied with her new coat and in her new disguise and Twilight's like can't tell her the price tag's still on it. That's that'd be kind of fucked up. She's so renowned as a really good spy, as the the full metal lady, as she's called. Um, that can't um can't bring himself. And then the reverse of that, where Lloyd is the one being ridiculous on their next meeting. <laughs> How's the plan going? Well, my daughter can now skip five times on a jump rope. Uh, oh, yeah, fuck. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, we do get, I think in one of these episodes, he has assessed Bond's intelligence and thinks he can be trained as a defense dog. Uh, mm, mm. I don't know if that's going to be a future story or just a passing comment. Uh, then Omelette Rice is a flashback to uh, more your cooking and uh, Yuri 
vomiting it up. Uh, Just a new and interesting censored dish because it's so horrifying. Yeah. Uh, and has this like made him tougher as a secret agent himself? It, because it, it establishes that he's been poisoned multiple times over his youth and youth and not died. And also yours, like, oh, stop it! And she kind of slaps him, he's like, with all the compliments, and she she hops him off the fucking ground as a child. <laughs> and it, it's just like it, the, when it shows him in the future, it's like he is now ha- have a, has an invincible body because of this upbringing. And it's like, so wait, then you got you fell through the plate glass window and you got hit by a truck. He's like, I'm fine now, and he's just walking down like covered in plasters and shit. So he, I, I he's. I got an invincible body, but he's also exceptionally unlucky or something. It's it's some weird combination of that. Yeah. Oh, okay, I just see what the next episode is called. Uncle the Private Tutor. Okay, that should be... Uh, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, that should be a good one. Plenty interesting. And also Daybreak. So another two-story one. Yeah, I like this format. I like this format a lot. Mm. I, like, I like how, as I said, it's not splitting it evenly. Just giving them enough time for each story. Yeah, yeah, right. It doesn't feel like anything's dragged out. Next up is Pop Team Epic, episodes four and five. I've not written out everything in them this time. Train <laughs> Battle is episode four, uh, and then episode five is Shining Sol- Shining Sh- Shoulder. Shoulder. Um, train Battle. The main story is uh, PPB and Popoco are on a train. Uh, PPB is an old man in this story. Popoco is Popoco. Uh, they declare they're going to have a train battle. Everybody is told by the announcer to evacuate the uh If you wish to the not carriage. get caught up in the train battle, then you need to leave to this carriage. And also they'll be showing it live on this other carriage. But you can look at the live feed anyway. So. And they proceed to have a train battle where they beat each other up on a train. Um, Using train stuff to beat each other up. Like throwing yes. the ice cream pots at each other from the... I- don't know if this is inspired by Bullet Train or the book Bullet Train is based on, um, or something else entirely. But it has some very nice animation, and also I think it's another one where the it's question mark question mark as to the studio. Uh, I think it is known who it is, and uh, yeah, because I've been ill, I've not written the notes I normally write for these. Um, let me see uh, if I can uh, hustle up. What the other memories of it. is this? This is God and Killua, isn't it? I think doing yeah. the voices yeah, yeah, yeah. for the, the women's in half. Episode four. Hmm. Um, oh yeah, the Akbu one is the very strange one where Popoko has like armor put on with a Newton's cradle and just constantly wins rounds of something that is not happening. <laughs> she doesn't understand the rules of this, but she's winning them immediately as they start. Yeah. Um. Then uh, they're throwing away rubbish and they blow up the earth. Um. Is it? Yeah, I think it's it's five. It's episode five where the uh, Pop Team Beckett B side gets cancelled, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Four is uh stuff being knives hidden in the jacket. That's the. Uh... Hmm. Uh oh, there's the the one where they start spinning their heads around, wanting clouts. Uh, we're talking about headshots. I assume that's some terrible Japanese puns being translated into terrible English puns. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, and the final bit is the uh, haiku. God, well, it's yeah. not the final bit. There's the video game bit. The haiku bit is the bit I remember because there's the outtakes after the men's part. I, I don't even mind that a lot of the outtakes. And now I realise why I'm losing the, the, the buy the DVD right. kind of uh, the joke because each each back differently. I can hear you again now. Uh, okay, I think there's something up with whenever I open a video file, but it's fucking up the. Uh, <laughs> that it fucks me out of it. Okay, it okay. does. Yeah. Uh, why it would do that? It's never done that before. Um, so I won't open up any files. So I won't remember what happens in the part five beyond Shining Soldier. Soldier? So- shoulder? Shoulder. Yes. Uh, so it's... The Shining Shoulder thing got me fucking laughing. Yes. Really fucking hard, man. That was it's great. It's PPB's doing an English, a TV English lesson that Popoko mm-hmm. is attending. And the English lesson is essentially her singing a Dragon Force song. <laughs> about... Yeah. Yeah. Very fucking Dragon Force. But the initial bit is like, chaos reigns. 
chaos rings you know i just like and it feels it, a bit like a cruel trick on the the male actors because clearly <laughs> one of the the woman playing ppb is so good at speaking english oh she that, has excellent english yeah yes so it works that, really well that the lads doing it in the second half they can't come off as well um but i mean like that's its own joke as well so that it is yeah. yes um can we say anything else in this one because i've watched the next i watched so uh, much pop team they're picking a row it's fried my brain God, yeah i i made the mistake as well of watching them together um which is the one where the um oh wait the zoo one was the zoo that was the yeah one. I'm thinking that, the that, one from yeah that was the prior one that was last week's yeah yeah, yeah. One was. i thought yeah. there was a different one where they used a lot of english but um yeah next week now. next week is the toki becky memorial one um where it's very different in the in the women's and the men's. They're they're two completely okay, different okay. dating games. Um, hmm. They change the they change the they flip the genders on the on the uh, graphics of the video game in, the, in both sides. Um, it's quite a clever way of getting a lot out of not doing any anima- any any animation. But we'll talk about that <laughs> next week. Uh, yeah, because I watched I watched four, then five, then six, then I watched. All four of the specials because Crunchyroll just kept on playing them, and then apparently I watched four and a half of the redubbed version of <laughs> season one. Uh, okay, can you tell I was ill? Uh, <laughs> uh, the the auto playing is kind of a curse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can't remember what else happened in episode five beyond the main story. I'm sure there was a load of old nonsense, except they cancelled part uh, side B and they blew up the Taki Shobo offices. Uh, I did like in the where they cancelled B side um, that it, it's showing all the shots from the prior ones, including the episode we're watching now because so little has fucking happened. Uh, that's very funny, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, doke. I'll get have the full notes for episode six next time. Golden Can We episode four from season four. Spoiled rich kid. Mm. Finally, we got Kuito's flashback where he gets kidnapped by quote-unquote Russians and rescued by his dad and Surumi. As... That, it's a great fun caper because he's being a little rich brat and he gets slapped by an older gentleman who well, I guess he's then smitten for a little because it's like, wow, okay. Uh, no one's ever fucking talked down to me before. <laughs> I'll now trust you, old man. You, wanna, you want me to give you a lift on my motorized bicycle? That yeah, sounds cool. Yeah, it's... Uh... It, it's also yeah they get kidnapped he gets kidnapped by quote unquote Russians uh, this is all anyway this all appears to be a plan because it's quite interesting is it's clearer in the comic that it feels like in the comic it's him remembering it from he, things he saw and things he was told I think yeah uh, and I think if you know that from the comic it's the same here because it's like I, I the... think it works like that the way his yes. dad like heroically kind of comes in like he's this is how him as a child pictured all this happening yes or I think it's more like him remembering it in the present day because of yeah 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 but, when, but, but, but when his, his childish memory of it obviously. yeah when his dad gets comes through the door and then gets hit by somebody behind him you can clearly mm. see the outline that it's somebody wearing the clothes we just saw Sarubi was wearing yeah <laughs> Uh, and also that final look he gives Agata at the end. You like, did he make that look then, or is that him in remembering it like, now? I'm remem- I remember who the fuck Agata is now. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. yeah, the key is when it doesn't come across as well here is the key when it, in the comic when this appears back at the hospital when they're confronting Agata after they've taken him to the hospital and he escapes. Uh, is he says the spoiled rich boy line in Russian, and then mm. that makes Kurito have this flashback and remember when one of the kidnappers said the same thing to him, and then he's like, "Hang on a second, do yeah, the events yeah. of that uh, that day quite play the same way I remembered it being?" Um, With that new piece of information, that sounds exactly like my memory of an old piece of information. Yes. Um, I get why they did it like this because it you, you can in a comic it's really easy to just yes. like whiplash like cut away from the fucking action as it's happening and um, cut to like someone's memory. But in in a show that wouldn't really work as well. I think it would, but it wouldn't work as the last episode of the series. As the last episode or the first episode of a season as well. Yes, I feel like that might. I think that I think the, the problem 
I think the problem this episode has as an episode is it's mm. your you don't have that context of recognition on Carito's face in the present and then go into the flashback. You, yeah, yeah. Not even I, I, even because that happened last at the end of the what we got in, instead of that was happened at the end of last episode. Mm. So it might work if you were binge watching it. Is that, uh, oddly enough, but not when there's a week the week gap. I think so. I've seen people confused by why on my anime list forums going. That's oh, just sort of a flashback. It's not important. So <laughs> fucking no, important. It's super important. <laughs> it's super key because yeah, it, it's yeah. like it's the, so. I, 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 the thing, so Surumi has pulled this plot. Out. He's got. Um, Ogata and uh, I can't remember his name because with STSU, the other guy who's wandering around with Koito at the moment. Yeah, uh, the quiet I guy who's relatively he's sensible. Like, he's he's the more sensible out of fucking all of his guys, I think. And yet, still Most completely, f- yes, still completely fucked by uh, Sarumi. Um, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Sarumi Golden can we? Let's just look at the list of people in the. Uh, in the division, um, seventh division members, yeah. So he's got those guys to kidnap Koito. Basically, it's convinced Koito to join the army instead of the navy. Yes. Um. So basically, his dad is an admiral, a, like a high up admiral in the navy, who's working on these new kind of ships and stuff like that. So these Russians who kidnapped his son, um, are basically asking his new torpedo boats. I think is what he's working on. Um, yes. to stand down so we can go destroy those boats. And but obviously the naval father is like, yeah, I will actually sacrifice my son for this because this is too important to the nation. Though it pains me to do it. Um, but as soon as the father gets the chance to go on a rescue mission, he fucking goes himself with yes. with Sarumi in tow, helping him out. Um, most of their clothes come off. Uh, <laughs> yes, and they end up essentially both dressed as different versions of Freddie Mercury. Um, it's pretty great. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because he's already lost one son. That's why it, it's it's another dead brother. Like it, it's character. the idea that if he if he doesn't do this, like like thousands of Japanese will die. Um, so he has to sacrifice the second son. But as soon as he gets the opportunity, like his son mentioning, uh, like saying, is just like you know where where he's at, that kind of thing. They get the information of where he's at because they're. The mansion that they they think he's been kidnapped from is like okay they have a guy watching this fucking place. It's it's just to try and stop the informant and shut down the phone lines and that kind of thing. Um, it's it's a complicated plan, but since Sarumi knows exactly what the fuck is going on because he planned the whole thing, it's actually not that fucking complicated. It seems like a lot of moving parts, but it's not. It's one guy planning the entire fucking thing. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah, because yeah, he ends up with. The dad getting knocked out, and then Sarumi has remarkably managed to kill all the kidnappers, uh, mm. who turned out to be uh, escaped prisoners of war, or possibly they were kidnapped prisoners of war who were shot. Uh, uh, oh, they thought they were prisoners of war, but they must have still been Russian soldiers sent to infiltrate this place. And it's just like, no, oh, he probably just killed a bunch of Russian POWs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, Tsukushima and Ogata are the ones pretending to be. Uh, the kidnappers. So Arjun Vlad is, is really impressed with Sarumi, so he's more willing to join the army. And obviously, his his admiral father is like, absolutely, this would promote good relations between the army and the navy, which is proper. And I'm just like, well, that really works out for Sarumi, then, doesn't it? Yes, like, it does. Hmm. He gets to the dad by the son. Uh, yeah, yeah. And was also created another incredibly loyal member of the seventh division. Up to now. Uh, <laughs> up, to, up to now, because yeah, this is the point at which yeah, uh, that doubt has begun to creep in. Mm-hmm. I think that was always in Tsukushima's mind, but we know from his flashback, it's like he's still Sarumi he, he for feel life. Like he has any other option? Yes. Basically. Yeah. Until Sarumi shows that, yeah, that maybe he's not on the up and up. In which case, he might put a bullet in his brain. Um. Mm. um yeah, so this is this is this is the unraveling of Kuito, but also uh, even for last season, Kuito is like elevated up to like one of the main characters. Yeah, particularly once he kills Kuroanki, uh, and it's seen it's yeah, not seen yeah. as like a a bad thing that he does it at the time because 
it's questionable, as we'll get into the next episode, <laughs> is like... Like, you can say a lot about Kiraranka, but, like, he, he had his reasons for doing what he was doing, and honestly, they sound pretty legitimate. Um, yes. Yeah. But uh, is it necessarily the right thing to do? Is, that's is the, the thing. question yeah, of the next episode. He believes it's the right thing to do. Like, it's clear in his actions before he was killed. Um, but, like, is it the right thing to do? But, um, again, if you're not paying fucking attention, you might be like, oh, the cinematograph, that's just them having a laugh. This fucking showman, right? So, like, there's a bit where there's there's several things talking about dicks, right? And there's like, okay, this this guy this guy is your brother, and now he's turned into an eagle, and he's gonna leave you forever. And it's genuine character emotion from the kid going like, he has been like a brother to me. The guy playing the guy who's turned into an eagle has been yes. like a brother to me. God, he has really set me up for a really fucking good life. And then that man bursts out of his chicken suit naked into the fucking snow. <laughs> and it's very stupid, dumb fucking jokes with like real fucking feelings attached to it. Those dick stories are very important to us, sir. They're, they're yeah. people's fucking culture, goddammit, and they're important. And they are, even though they're stupid stories about dicks. That are very funny. Yeah. How is he uh, balancing this? I don't fucking know. It's amazing. I'm curious as to when this chapter came out because this 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 story reminds me of so much of the documentary now episode, which is a parody <laughs> of the Nuke of the North. Yeah. God, they might uh, be coming from the same fucking place. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously this is also coming from a real place because this is an episode yeah, with yeah. a real person in it. Yeah. Uh Katsutaru Wait, is the real person the silent Frenchman or the uh, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if Jarell is a real person, but uh Katsutaru Inaba is indeed a real person. Hmm. Uh yeah. So, he's going uh, around filming people uh, in, in particular at the time he's filming uh, Ainu, which um catches his attention because Sugimoto is insisting, I'll fucking talk to Serpa. You fucking stay away from her, lads. And she'll, she'll open up to me about this shit. And she's performing the um, a ritual for hunting in these woods. It's And he's talking like, I thought you weren't religious. It's like, And she's like, these traditions are a way of, like, I think they're for centering your mind to to get into the, the thing of hunting so you you have your wits about you when you're going into the wilds and that kind of thing. And she, she's kind of appreciating the idea that this isn't for religious reasons, it's for um, societal, personal reasons, but that actually have benefit now. And a, a random passing by filmmaker goes like, oh, fucking cool. Could you do that again? Um, I want to I want to take a shot of um, the Ainu ceremonies and traditions and stuff. And then they get attacked by Wolverines. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, episode two of Documentary Now, Canuck Uncovered was 2015. This chapter was 2019. So he's, oh, he could have fucking watched it. He yeah, could have watched it, yeah. Um, <laughs> because that that's a similar thing where it's a parody of because it's a parody of Nanook revisited the thing about like going into the fakery involved in Nanook of the North. Um, yes, but yeah, the, yeah. the 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 crux of Canoe and Covered is that the guy who they hire to be the focus of their film ends up taking over the production and direction and casting of the entire thing. And, I was, and that is exactly what happens here. A surfer yeah. takes over yeah, yeah. everything. We have her in like the director's glasses, the director's hat, um, barking she, orders. She becomes being... very much so the, the power mad director and everyone has yes. to go to her whims. Um, cause, I like, uh, as I li they, they save this um, filmmaker from two Wolverines. Um, yes. Uh, and he, he, you owe me one. So you need to do what I, whatever the fuck I say. You need to take footage of what I think you should. Yeah, I, I really like how the actress who plays a surfer, when she gets angry, it just stops being even pretending to be a 13-year-old girl's voice. It's just an adult woman <laughs> barking orders at men. Voice. It's <laughs> because she's putting on her big boy voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's very funny. But yeah. like, it, her thing is, basically, uh, he demonstrates the, the thing that they're filming um, by showing some of the, the Ainu dances. And him explaining, he's not even doing this for like cultural preservation he's doing this because like he, th these videos sell really well to um the the europeans and stuff i think is who he's selling yes them to. yeah um of, of traditional uh practices and that kind of stuff and a service sees this as this is a way of preserving our fucking culture holy shit this is amazing we gotta fucking do some of our t tales and he, the director's like yeah but the problem with i knew tales is they're all oral and you guys don't have a, a tradition of theater and she's like, no, 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 we can act them out. It'll work. It'll totally fucking yes. work. 
Uh, and then they play them, and then uh, the Frenchman puts in a reel that they filmed uh, 10, year, tw- 10, 12 years ago, and it is all... Because it's like, oh, this 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 person really reminded me... Uh, yes. These two people reminded me of it, because yeah. you have this guy's eyes, and you look really like this Ainu woman. Yes, and it's film of her mother and father. And yeah. uh, and some of the guys are reacting as like, oh, is that what Wilk looked like when he had a face? Wow, okay. Yes. Because um, they haven't fucking seen him with a face, and Aserp has never seen her mother. And again, this just hammers home the, the thing of film to her. It's like, this is something I couldn't have fucking experienced without without this like yes without uh, passing but, down traditions yes. and that kind of thing and also without yeah she guess it she's like okay i've got to see all these i've got to see the other id people not just the hokkaido people and it's all because of kuroanki so maybe he was i doing should this follow to make yes. me see the rest of the way yes. these people live with the way my people live so yeah. maybe i should do the things he wants me to do and then uh sukimoto yeah. is like no I don't want you to have blood on your hands because I know what it's like to have blood on your hands and you don't recover from it and I don't want that for you. And she's saying, like, I can't be the version of you that could enjoy persimmons. I can't be the innocent child version of you that's that's dead, basically. From Yes, from she like, accuses him of being selfish and he goes, yes, that is some of it, but I know you don't know. Um, so therefore yeah. I'm going to try and protect you from that. Um and and so now we're now we're at the uh, the new bit of the drama between our two leads of like I'm going to yeah. try and protect you. You don't necessarily want me protecting you. And there, there's such a beautiful like symmetry from the earlier part of the episode because uh, when they're getting attacked by Wolverines, Sugimoto's like stay back. Its its fur is still bristling, so it's not dead yet. That kind of thing. And when a serpa says it's like I think maybe I know what to do with this shit, and maybe it's to start a fucking war, like. Sugimoto bristles like a fucking wolverine yeah. and he's like no I'm not going to let you do that. Yeah. Um yeah, just really fucking and again a very fucking funny episode, really funny, lots of dick jokes. Um, yeah. Plenty. And then and yeah, the, the stuff in the in the stories I think which echoes in the next yes. episode. Hmm. Uh about the was it is it a man disguised as a bear or a bear disguised as a man in the story because then we get in the bear uh... man in the next episode. Yeah, God, I think it's a guy. A, like it, it's basically a, a Camui taking the form of a man, but it, yeah. it was a bear, and obviously it turns into an eagle as well. So yeah, yes, I think it's the opposite way because there's a bear. I think in the next episode, and it turns out to be a man. Mm-hmm. Um, not it's not the story about the man who fucks a bear. That's only on the OVAs, <laughs> <laughs> which has a very strange ending. Where he fucks the bear and Sugimoto is cheering it, even though this man is a guy who they want to skin, is cheering him on because he's achieved his dreams of fucking a bear. Yeah, like again, the the it, the, the show is weird in its funniness. Like Sugimoto, rem- like kind of remarking like he's really embarrassed. That is like, oh no, you can see my balls in that shot. Yes. Oh my god, you know. Um, a lot of, lot of weird stuff. And I, I really enjoyed that the, the narrator kind of going like, all of these stories involve their dick somehow. And yes, that one idiot guy always dies at the end of the fucking story yeah. somehow. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also Tanagaki going, I guess everybody knows that I've got enormous balls in this area because that's what uh, Chikapasi they... tells everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, he's like, I'm glad we brought these kids along because the, he's, the, kid, the, the other Ainu are like, who's that fucking strange man with you? And it's like, oh, that's my brother. He's got giant testicles. And men laugh. And it's like, ah, kids, you know, it's like a good thing we brought these kids with us because this really fucking makes us look like not suspect at all. Yeah. And also now everyone knows I have giant testicles. So, you know. Win win, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a good episode. We got one more, and they're on hiatus because somebody has died, and they're essential to production. And so, I mean, like, that's hiatus. unfortunate, but I, I prefer that than for them to rush it, like to get yes, to, get, yeah. um, to do it right. Like, yeah, it just yeah. it just unfortunately means then people start trying to go, which well, who was it? It's like the the little bit of information makes the. Uh, the uh, speculation worse, I think, than if it, sure, it just. Sure. But um, such is death announcements in Japan. Um, I mean, it's it's a personal fucking thing. They don't it is, make yes. it public unless they want to. Like nah, so, but, um, uh, I, I just yeah, I hope they can. Um, oh, I don't, I don't like, blame people for speculating either. It's just unfortunate that that always tends that to people be, do it because will, they're not saying yeah. who died. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 
uh, always going to be people are always going to be curious because they want to like make sense of a bizarre situation in their heads. Um, mm -hmm. Then finally, we've got Mob Psycho 100 episode. Th oh, no, no, Mob Psycho 100 season three episode four, Divine Tree One. Uh, <laughs> Manchester United nil. Uh, founder appears. Uh, Mob Psycho 100 part three, three episode five, Divine five, Tree Two. Divine Tree Peace. Two. Peace. Yeah. Uh, so the first part. I don't know you, and this may be my age. I don't know whether this is an experience that people younger than me have, but the vibe it had is of a kids' TV show that you might have seen once that scared you, was like spooky and uh, made you uneasy, and then you couldn't remember the name of it for the rest of your life. And then <laughs> eventually the internet came along, and then you go, oh, that's what it was called. Uh, it's got yeah, that sort of I, it's like the it's it's not scary. It's just eerie as like everybody falls under the sway of the divine tree slowly, except it, Bob. It, it's it's the thing of um it's the thing I really like of horror where it's it's not that there's a, a cat jumping out at you or like something to startle you. I fucking hate that. It feels cheap. It's the one that it's it's getting in under your fucking skin. It's subtle and unnerving. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know the kind of thing you're talking about. Um. Uh, yeah. And another amazing thing about this is I don't know whether this, this is just the writing or my brain or the right or, the, or my brain is in line with the writing of this and that's why I enjoy sure. it so much. There's a beat I can't remember where it is. What or even what made me think it? And maybe it's when he goes to uh, Hanazawa goes to confront uh, Psycho Helmet and then figures out who it is. Um, yeah, yeah. And then uh, they're fighting. And then I thought, hang on a second, wasn't one of the guys from the Big Five in the last season, didn't one of them have like powers Pants. related to plants? Yes. And the very next scene cuts to him. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's it's being smart, like, because um, he's working in a florist, obviously, he yeah. has, has to get work now. And he's kind of like, man, there's all these fucking roots, like rooting shit up and sucking the life out of the other plants. I better connect with it and see what the fuck happens. Which is the one fucking thing yes. that this broccoli wants you to do to make a connection to it physically or ingest it. That's yes. a good one. Mm. Um, though it becomes clear that it was it, it's entirely Dimple making that happen. It's like yeah. the cult until Dimple came along was just a good natured thing people who were trying to find meaning in their life were doing. It wasn't like, the he's tree. He's good natured. Like people have all their own fucking reasons yes. that they're bringing to it, and he's just. Uniting those reasons. Yes, because this is the other thing. Is Dimple, and this is particularly the second part, because the second part is yeah. Bob, we, once he realizes Regan's gone, he's like, okay, I'm going to have to speak to. That's the thing that kind of pisses him off, because himself and, and Regan and uh, his brother are going around doing the things, and he realizes partway through, he's like, oh, his brother ate the, ate the, um, the broccoli yes. candy that he was given, because everyone's given it out for free. Um, but Regan's just affected by the consensus opinion of the people in the town. It's like, we gotta go... It, and it, you don't know whether it's actually gotten control of him at that stage, or is he just like, we gotta go with the flow. If everyone else is mind control, then, I mean, like, that's that's the market I have to market myself to now. Yes. Um, it's not clear whether it's one or the other, but the fact that it's gotten to him is the thing that actually pisses off Mob. Yes. He's like, alright, uh, I gotta fucking sort this out now then. And, the and fact when he that gets to the broccoli, everyone's just like, "Hey, he's here!" It's Clap the everyone. other, it's the other founder. Yeah, it's like they recognize him as the other founder of the group. Uh, and then it becomes clear that Dimple hasn't thought his plan through. He doesn't know that the town's falling apart because of what he's doing. And all Bob wants him to do is face him face to face and have a and mm. have a conversation. And Dimple None of this can't... broccoli versions yeah. of me appearing. Like, yeah, and yeah. the way it comes across is Dimple thinks he's a shitty person, and so therefore he has to do shitty things, and has to do do this, become a god, because otherwise, why was I doing those shitty things in the first place? And the other thing is the way he's doing this, and he's not one hundred percent wrong, but he's convinced himself he's doing a good thing. They, I, I, this isn't mind control. I'm not telling them what to do. I'm giving them the thing they want. Yes. I'm giving them like they they want a god. They want a higher meaning. They want a purpose. And I'm saying I'm part of that. So just five minutes of your day, pray towards the fucking great tree, and just live your life. I'm not telling people how to live their life. 
and I, I by giving them this, I'm being a good person, kind of. Oh, and also, yeah, I'm getting yeah. all the spiritual energy. So yes. you know, win win. Uh, and we could rebuild the town, and then we'll we'll take it, we'll spread it through Japan, we'll spread it through the world. Uh, and but he still won't come out and face him. And then they get into the fight. And but even when they're fighting, he's concerned about Mob. He doesn't want to hurt Mob. And you're like, you're telling he wants yourself Mob to join him. He yes. Wants, like a lot of people, even Reagan has like willingly joined him. That kind of thing. Yes. He's like he know he thinks he's bad, but he can't be fully bad. And but this is all pushing him to one hundred percent. So it's all quite tragic for Dimple. But then it ends on a punchline of the thing which pushes him over to 1,000% or 100% is he destroys his school uniform and sees that terrible shirt he bought two episodes ago. <laughs> that stupid monkey shirt. It's it's so good because it's such like a character thing. It's like, Dimple, just fucking talk to me, man. Come out and face me and talk to me. I just want to fucking talk. I want to talk this through. And Dimple's like, I've taken on my godly form. And it's like, no, that's like a golden version of you. That's not you. I know who you are as a person talk to me like th- none of this fucking artifice and it's just like i'm gonna fucking freaking kamehameha my way through this it says dimple and it's just like what a fucking stupid shirt click 100 percent um yeah. very 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 funny and then you're like oh dear and i wonder if next episode it's gonna flip and and the villain will then be mob the 100 percent mob and yeah. yeah uh even though neither of them are really the villain here it's just Dimple no, won't. They're, they're both flawed, basically. Yes, yeah. Dimple won't admit to himself who he, what he really is. Um, mm-hmm. they, 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 have, they have the same conversation twice because Hanazawa has like almost the same conversation with him in episode four, but they're not close. They're not as close friends as Mob is. See, yeah, Hanazawa doesn't know him personally. No, which is why it doesn't it, like it. It should work, but he like because again, there's not that personal connection. He, he can't get the whole way with it. He becomes. Uh, corrupted or controlled yes, he gets, or right, influenced yeah. by Dimple. Yeah, yeah, he gets stuck in the tree, and then once he gets released, then yeah, he's uh, on Dimple's side. Um, and they they talk about like his would be girlfriend didn't get brainwashed; she just came of here of her own accord. See, that's uh, the thing: the people that because she's a very strong-willed individual, and she just saw that this was good, and this is good for a lot of people, so she came to me. And that's why she's never going to go to you, Mob, because you're not the, you don't stand out. You purposely don't fucking stand out. And even if you get buff, that's not going to fucking do it because she'll make, she makes her own decisions. Yeah. You can't uh, force her into decision. And I'm not forcing her into this. She naturally came to me. Yeah. Naturally um, is debatable, but yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, when the, the girl from the photography club is the one who lets Mob through as the final person into the thing. I was yeah. like, is she actually under control? Or was she just doing all this to get Bob here uh, to see what happens? See, that's the thing. She mightn't have eaten any of the candy. She mightn't be brainwashed or yeah. brain influenced. It's, it's just the look on her face. It's just like the look on her face was like, oh, now I've got what I wanted all along, which was to get Bob into here to see what happens next. But what she wants to do is get Mob there, which lines up to the rest of the cult of the great yes. tree. Yes, yeah. And what other people want is meaning in their life or personal thing. What Reagan wants is like, well, this if this is where the market's going, it lines up to people's interests, but it's not necessarily right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's still loads of characters we haven't seen yet, so they may show up next episode as well. Um, yeah. Because yeah. there's loads of the other psychics, because you're the guy from Reagan's office. Uh, was uh, He's he's not involved yet. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, nor is... Uh, the uh, the son of the last villain, whose name I yeah, forgot. Yeah, yeah. The one who's clearly the in love with, guy. yeah, the one who's clearly in love with Bob's little brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I assume they will either show up uh, in the next episode or to deal with Bob. Now he's got a hundred percent. If this show was just like the the interesting character writing that they've they've got this huge cast and everything and working it all together works really well and like you say it was like wasn't there like a plant guy yep there he is like it's very smartly written but also those fights are fucking class yes like it's, the, the many it's amazing. broccoli mobs that are attacking him and just getting like ripped to shreds um just really fucking cool looking stuff yeah because that's the good thing about the fight as well is you never feel like mobs in danger um 
No, it's no, the impulse no. It's, of the one. It's, 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 it's the one thing of our hero is not uh, our One Punch Man or our mob is like he's not in danger. Don't worry about that. That's not what this is about. As a no. The, the danger is what Dimple's doing to himself and the rest of the town. Exactly. It's the personal stakes, and that's much more yeah. important. The fight looks yeah. cool, but there's not any threat, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the, the threat is uh, friendship over with Dimple. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, wonderful series. I feel like this, uh, I think, for all these together, it's probably going to be like a classic when you've got all three parts Yeah, yeah. sitting next Easy. to each other. Uh, I do think I, part two felt a little slow compared to part one for me, but this feels this is pretty really quick. Hit the running. Yeah, I think maybe I'm just used to the pace of part two now, and that's it is keeping up that pace. That could also be that's true. Yeah, yeah, uh, and maybe because I haven't read these comics uh, twice in the same way that I'd uh, read the earlier stuff. Um, sure, sure. I do wonder if there's going to be some more original material like there was previously. Uh, whether they'll I mean, get that's, what that's worked when they did it right. Yeah, yeah, I mean they got an episode where one did the animation, so <laughs> 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 they may do that again. I mean, he's got another series hmm. starting, Aston T, but he's only writing that, not drawing that. Okay. Um, I don't know where that's running. I don't know if that's one of these ones which might show up on uh, the Shonen Jump app or not. Otherwise, that is it for this week. Um, I did briefly check in on Eurosite Sura, and I really like Mamoru's voice. Uh, Miyano is the, it's the only voice where I don't think of the original actors when I hear it. Um, mm-hmm. They, uh, I'd forgotten that Ten in the comic doesn't show up as early as he does in the anime, and yet when they did the Princess Karuma story, they didn't do her origin story from the comic, they skipped ahead to the story where they try and get Mendel to kiss her and uh, bring her out of her suspended animation and be her husband as her introduction instead. And that story in the comic does have Ted in it, and he's not in this version because they oh. haven't introduced Ted yet. Because uh, hmm. that's, that's... Uh, yeah, because I thought they were going to do like a more uh, manga adaptation, but obviously they're skipping to the bits they want to do as well. And yeah, things out, oddly it enough. feels like very much that they wanted to get to Mendo as quickly as possible, mm-hmm. which I, is, I think is fair enough because he is like the fourth lead. Um, uh, yeah. Whereas I think Mamoroshi, for whatever reason, wanted to get to 10 as quickly as possible and have him as the fourth, le- third lead, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. But it does feel like with going to Karuma so quickly. I assume they're probably going to quickly go to Benten, Ayuki, and Ran based on the characters on the website. Hmm. That at least for the first 12 episodes or so, they're probably going to be focused more on the potential girlfriend characters. Even though they will never be his girlfriend. Because uh, I think yeah, generally yeah. they hate him. A Yuki, I think, is the only one who comes close to actually finding a Taru somehow attractive. Outside of Lum, everybody else uh, thinks he's a terrible boy because he is mm. a terrible boy. Uh, oh, yeah, they've got uh, Ryoko Mendo's on this list as well, so they'll do introduce her even far earlier than they did in the original anime. Mm. Uh, and then I wonder if the next 12 episodes will take a different tact. Um, Right, I think it's going to be forty-eight episodes or so. So they may just have like go with like a set of themes because um, yeah, there's plenty of characters who are on the poster on the main website who haven't shown up yet. So uh, mm. and they're pretty key characters who have a lot of episodes, like Ten uh, and like uh, Rian Sake and her terrible, terrible dad. Uh, truly, one of the most I think, hated characters in uh, uh, sort of uh, late seventies, early eighties manga and comics. People really hate the dad because he is the worst. Um, uh, he's like the prototype of Genma from Ranma Half, mm-hmm. um, except he doesn't turn into a cute panda. Uh, in fact, loads oh, of the so, Ur- yeah. loads of the Osara characters you can see as like prototypes for. 
Ran Mahal, or rather, Ran Mahal is probably the refined or version of uh, yeah, sure. Eurosite Sura. Uh, yeah, so animation wise, it is a little flat in places, I would say. There's like occasional scenes where it suddenly gets like a flurry of animation where somebody is like, I want to draw a lum. Uh, and so I'm going <laughs> to. That's I'm an gonna... easy thing to get an animator to do. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, some of the other stuff fell a little flat. Um, yeah, so I don't know when I'll next pop in to revisit it. I suspect when they announce the, the 10 casting, and then I'll keep an eye out for... So I'm like, mm. none of the other characters on the cast list really... I mean, I like Sakura, but she's always kind of there. Maybe I'll check out the episode where her boyfriend shows up who's barely in the original anime. I don't know if he gets more chapters in the comic. Because the gag is that she's a uh, Shinto priestess slash school nurse. Uh, and her boyfriend is like a Western black magic practitioner. Oh, yeah. The two different schools of magic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and there's an episode where they end up going to the disco and all the kids follow them to the disco. And then they end up summoning loads of monsters in the disco. And as I occasionally run a paddle about anime discos, um, I will universe, be yeah. I will be interested in seeing how they represent that in the new anime. Hmm. Uh, maybe also when Lum's mum shows up, because that's where she's being voiced by uh, Fumi Hirano, the original Lum. Hmm. And as I remember it, she just talks gobbledygook. Uh, <laughs> so that should be an easy paycheck. <laughs> yep, has to be subtitled. Uh, so it's subtitles on subtitles, I think, in the old uh, anime ego releases. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, next week, uh, what is coming up? We've got no We've got, like less than half of what we were talking about. Today. <laughs> We've got <laughs> we got no Edgerunners. We've got no Dragon Quest. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's have a look. No at the um, Detective Conan for a bit. So yeah, no Detective Conan. Uh, we've got one episode of Golden Camway to come. Mm -hmm. uh, this week we had Tatami Gallet Time Machine Blues drop, but I guess we can put that off a week, and we can use that to replace Golden Camwe exactly because we'll be missing six episodes of Golden Camwe, and there are exactly six episodes of Tatami Time Machine Blues. Okay, okay. Um, that is on Disney Plus. Um, I think that is. It weekending the eleventh. Yeah, nothing else new is coming up. If we move that to mm -hmm. Tommy, uh, I could also move these JoJo's in the spreadsheet down a notch. Um, so this week we'll be doing episode twenty-two, and that means we won't have to have a week where because I've been ill, that will prevent me having to do a week where we suddenly go back to let's go for a week. <laughs> we've, we've run out of JoJo's episodes and then immediately more JoJo's episodes arrive. Mm, mm, mm. So yes, we can be JoJo's going forward until we hit episode 38 of uh, Stone Ocean. Yeah, yeah. And then there is... I don't know what the deal is with this Lupin Zero. Is that... Mm. where? What is that streaming on? It's a thing they announced very quickly and it's coming very soon. Um... Yeah, kind of out of nowhere. Uh, Lupin Zero. Not to be confused with Episode Zero, The First Contact. It is six episodes long. It is airing December the 16th, 2022. Okay. Um, so we can probably not have to worry about that till uh, then. Hmm. Me and Robico, that's coming in December as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I think so. Could forget about that one, and the culprit Hanazawa is probably only coming to Japanese Netflix this year. We'll probably have to wait a bit okay. uh, for that. I think that's it, though. I don't think there's anything else new coming along to that we know of that we know mm. of because I did not know. I mean, Lupin. yeah, something that, that loop had zero. Came out of nowhere, and I was like, "Oh, that's must be coming out next." No, what? A, a few months time? Okay, right. <laughs> uh, and it's the thing I was asking for when we were talking about the previous season because they were doing all those allusions to him as a kid, hmm. and uh, now we're getting it. Hmm. 
Uh, and there's probably enough material, I think, for um, six episodes hmm. from the original comic. So good chance that it might be stuff straight out of the comic. Uh, it's being written by... Ooh, have we liked anything this guy's written before? Oh, he did a Space Dandy script, but I think it's my least favourite Space Dandy episode. <laughs> Uh, uh, Devil Man Cry Baby, he wrote. Uh, oh no, we need to see part. He wrote part five of Lupin the Third as well, which oh, is okay, probably yeah. which is my favourite part of those modern Lupin TV series. Hmm. So we're sorted. I think he's not. Oh, and uh, he's doing Skate Infinity second season and Skate Infinity. Wait, he did the first season as well. Is that he did. Right? Yes. Okay, no, that's some good stuff. Yeah, 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 and he's doing the current uh, Gundam show as well oh jeez yeah uh, the only reason I'm not keeping up with it is because of all the other fucking things I'm watching but yeah. exactly yeah I, I've started watching even more stuff uh, that's not <laughs> anime uh, righty here that's it for this week hopefully Niall will be back with us next week I think we just misread his tweets uh, mm -hmm. when we were communicating as to uh, whether or not he'd be here hopefully hopefully nothing untowards happened to him uh, I'm sure he'll check in when he gets gets to Twitter uh, back next week with more of the same. Goodbye.